Hello, Lottie. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Lottie Hello, is... lovely. <laughs> Lottie's 31 weeks pregnant with her second IVF baby. We've received so many messages and questions from mums who are going through IVF or preparing to go through IVF and worried about how to stay active. We thought we should talk to an expert and someone who's lived through it. And while each pregnancy is different and it's important to talk to your doctor or midwife, if you have any concerns about your health, the health of your baby, how you should stay active, we would love to share Lottie's story to provide some information and reassurance and some inspiration. So Lottie, could you tell me a little bit about your IVF journey and what your experience has been like for your two pregnancies? Yeah, so with my first pregnancy, it was um, IVF. And with my second one, it was a frozen transfer. So it's been a bit surreal because this time, the baby I've now got in my tummy here could have been the that's upstairs right now and vice versa so it's that weird kind of thing of it was literally down to what egg was put into my tummy at the time so I mean we've we've spoken to Scarlett and I'm like it's your sister but technically it could have been her twin Do you know it's just <laughs> the wonder of science is absolutely nuts um but this time round it was a very different experience um I think I felt a lot more guilt because I felt like it I had one beautiful child and obviously for me, well, I mean, not obvious for me, it wasn't going to happen naturally again. Um, and lockdown just created that space. And I think it, it did for a lot of people of just time really think and see where life was going and what we did. And we knew how hard it had been to get Scarlett. We knew the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations, the pressure it put on our relationship. So we were kind of, quite reluctant to go down that road again however it felt like something was missing it felt like someone someone was missing um and so we thought right let's just have one try and if it is meant to be it will be and quite frankly I think if it hadn't have been we probably would have kept on trying because you, you just want it so bad then but um it was a strange time to do it in. I was doing injections and I was getting Scarlett ready for school. And my husband was working as well because he's a key worker, he's a policeman. So I'd be like shoving the injection in my leg, trying not to wince with the pain, reading her a story being like, and three little ducks did this. <laughs> um, you don't have the time to really think about what you're putting your body through. And I think when it actually worked, during the pregnancy, when you start to go a bit slow, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe what I'm doing and that it's happening again. Um, I felt a huge sense of guilt that it worked first time because it did with Scarlett and I felt like, you know, I don't deserve this. There are women far more deserving than me. Um, and also when it came to fitness, it was the sense of, do I do it like I did last time, which was look, if it's meant to be, this baby is not fall out. I just have to get on with my life as it is because quite frankly, if I don't, I will go stir crazy. And for my mental health, I think that's just as important for the well-being of your child as your physical health is. Yeah. Because happy there is mom, so much reason. Happy baby, well, you're giving me the best chance. And, you know, exactly. also looking, being a good mum to Scarlett and, you know, managing your relationship under super stressful lockdown pandemic circumstances. Mm. And, you know, it, there, it has been proven that the stress that a mother goes through can put a lot of us on the fetus as well. And it was an unhappy baby. So I very much kind of went through the process. Um, it was weird. We had to wear masks. I had to go on my own. Scarlett was outside with um, her daddy playing squirrels while I was under anesthetic having an egg put in me <laughs> and then afterwards a period of lockdown where you could actually go and do stuff so we went to um a place called birdland and we just chased dinosaurs whereas the first time around it had been very much um there's this baby inside of us let's go home let's have a coffee let's talk and plan this time it was like we can't we we've, we've got this toddler that we've got to do this whole get on with it and i didn't want her to know until it was actually going potentially to work because how would she understand at three what what this was so um 
as you know, or if you don't know um, other women, you have a two week wait to find out whether you're pregnant or not. And that two week wait was just as hellish as the first time because you are taking all these drugs, all these, you take some pessaries and some drugs um, and they make your body feel like you're pregnant. So you feel every emotion that a pregnant woman does. You even kind of feel like, oh, I've got a craving, but you don't <laughs> know whether you are. And, and the clinic are amazing because they call you up every day-ish and they say, oh, how are you? Like, are you stressed? But for me, it was like, they're basically putting in my mind the thought that I should be stressed and yes I am stressed and am I pregnant <laughs> so I cheated did a test and it told me nothing because they don't tell you anything you can't know until the two weeks and then finally at two weeks I got the positive result and was just over the moon but also didn't feel real did not feel real at all <laughs> now guess, now <laughs> indeed yeah, there's no there's no disguising that <laughs> you're definitely pregnant <laughs> and it, and in terms of um one of the most common questions we get is around what kind of exercise is best to stay active especially in the first trimester when you might be feeling the most anxious and when it you know even if it's not an ivf baby even if you've just conceived normally it's you know, the time when you know, we feel the most anxiety around making sure is the baby going to stay, you know, and you, you know, for many people, myself included, the first trimester is the period when you feel the most rubbish, <laughs> you know, the most nauseous and tired. And um, uh, I've, you know, staying active was the thing that gave me a lot of um, calm, in that feeling and a bit of centering and 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 also help with my energy levels even though you don't think it's going to um what what would you recommend for somebody to who wants to stay active but is in that super anxious phase especially if they have um if it's an ivf pregnancy absolutely so for me um i'd say there are three main takeaways that i think you should as a pregnant woman or as a woman in general when it comes to fitness exercise and your health just hold on to the first big one is listen listen to your body listen to yourself when you wake up in the morning you can't expect every day to feel like you want to jump on a trail or go for a massive run when it's you know when you just might wake up and have a headache or it might be pouring with rain or you may not have had a great night's sleep or you must feel that ick of just like actually I don't feel right today and if that is the case don't do anything don't push your body never push yourself beyond somewhere where you don't feel comfortable um, as an exercise professional when we do work out when you're pregnant through every stage of your trimester you should in your RPE your rate of perceived exertion so what you're looking at is when you're working out can you still speak can you still hold a conversation comfortably if you can then you're working within safe parameters if like me you're like is my baby going to fall out of my body if I exercise well no your baby isn't going to fall out of your body it's just not it's it's cocooned around your womb if it does result in a miscarriage there are normally underlying reasons for that to have happened can you cause a carriage who knows if you were to go out and you've never done an iron man and you wake up and you think i'm going to go and do an iron man in your first trimester then i would seriously question your sanity <laughs> and also suggest yes that would have an impact on your body however if you look at the exercise you were doing before you were pregnant and if you maintain that exercise but just reduce the intensity reduce the level to about 70 80 percent then you are working safely and you are being careful and mindful of your body so listen listen to your list those signals the second one is find a practice find a routine, a regime that suits you. Find that thing that you do every Monday, that thing that you do once a week, twice a week, three to five times a week, and keep it in a schedule. And if you wake up on that day and you feel like, actually, I can't do it today, do five minutes or change it up, 
change the day to what you do on another day. Just move it around. Be playful, be mindful, but have that kind of regularity of routine. It helps the structure of your day, especially in lockdown, where it can feel like actually at the moment we are very structureless. It can be very overwhelming. You can just be looking at the news and being able to buy all those terrible stories of women who've had to give birth on their own or are struggling with not being able to pop in with their scans. That can put so much stress on you. Instead, try to just limit that. Try to reduce that. If you do need to look at it, just do it at maybe once a week at a certain time or just before bed. Never yeah. before bed. That is the word. <laughs> absolutely you don't want to wake up panicking about these things that you can't control and then the third final point is just kind of thrive kind of really find something to enjoy find the positive find it could be something completely different you might find that you know on fit mama you can see that you've got all these workouts that you can try you might find something on there that you think actually i've never tried that but I have that. that's my new thing and hold on to it and remember it or there might be some nutrition advice on there and you think, actually, I really like that recipe. I've learned something. And also look at your body. I'm really conscious mine's rainy today. I don't know why. <laughs> I think I've just been through a walk and it's like popping all that blood in my body. But just look at your body and be so proud. Like, even when I'm at my lowest day and I feel gross and like my first trimester was just nausea, crazy. Just so proud that we're women. We can, we can make lives. Like... We can, we can actually be a little human. Um, and my husband said to me, it's like, I've just been at work today. You've been growing a life inside of you. Like it, my, it blinks, it's got ashes, it's shaking me now. That's amazing. We, we do this, you know? We just take You're doing advantage. this, Alex. Like, <laughs> oh, it's, I mean, like, uh, it becomes so, um, you kind of, especially when it's your second baby, you start to forget about it, but, it is incredible when you take a step back and you think, yeah, there it is, just keeping on keeping on growing inside me and just doing everything you can to give it the nicest possible home is first start. So um, I think, yeah, sometimes taking a moment to reflect back and recognize that we're doing the best you can and to reward yourself, even just by sitting there and going, yeah, don't beat myself up that I only did 20 minutes of my workout not the full half an hour that I intended or that I was planning to you know go for a nice wholesome walk and actually what I did was uh, have a little curl up on the sofa and read a book or watch Netflix or you know you know do the pepper pig rather than the uh than than the, the more wholesome activity with my little boy so I think it's yeah recognizing that we you know as you said listening to your body being nice to yourself and um, and giving yourself permission to have the time to work out that it's not selfish, that it's doing the right thing for you, it's preparing you for labor and also um, keeping you happy. Because <laughs> I think for a lot of women, they put themselves so far at the bottom of the list that it can mean that you know your exercise, your physical activity can feel like a luxury rather than um, an essential part of your day. So I really like the scheduling tip. Um, for me, I always do it first thing in the morning before people are up. Um, and then it just sets me off in a nice, jolly mood for the day rather than <laughs> feeling a bit stiff and cranky before I've even begun. But um, we um, have got quite a lot of your workouts from your first pregnancy. Um, and one of the things that I started doing following your lockdown lives with us, which has been fantastic, is bar, which I didn't realise would be so fun. I always thought of it being a bit you know, if you hadn't done dance training, that it would be a bit confusing or awkward, but it's amazingly um, challenging whilst never putting any pressure on my joints. My knees hurt far more this time, my pelvic floor. I definitely more aware of it on my second pregnancy than my first pregnancy. So um, yeah, that's a, a really nice one to try if you're wanting something challenging, but not impactful. Totally agree. And it's, it, again, it's, it's finding those different workouts that kind of fit you during that time. And you can't know until you're pregnant and you're in that trimester what it's going to be. But totally try you haven't tried before. And also find your motivation and be your own iteration. Don't measure yourself up against 
all these Instagrammers and influencers who seem to be working out every day, I can absolutely guarantee they're not. And they will also <laughs> be having those down days. And also, you know, you work out first thing in the morning. What I love about your clothes is bright pink colors make you want to work out. I want to work out when I wear this. Like, it's really, really important to find the kit that supports you during your pregnancy, makes you feel safe and able to do those exercises. Like you've said with bar, you know, it's a really different form of exercise. There are lots and lots of squats and pulses and arm work as well. So you want to be able to have the flexibility in your workout tops, but also the support for your bump. What I particularly love about your designs is, try and stand up so you can see, you've got a supportive panel underneath the chest and also the bump you've got a supportive thing here which I like because let me tip this thing I'm wearing shorts so I do apologize but you can put it below your bump to kind of push and support it can't you so you've got that or you can put it which I like doing as well on the bump itself which also gives it that kind of sense of I mean for me it's like I'm giving my baby a cuddle while I'm working <laughs> out but it makes that was our intention <laughs> but like, she gets a cut off and I get a workout what more could I want <laughs> well so, I am yeah. um, addressing to feel secure and the clothes have been designed have been proven to support your bump back and boobs so it does lift it all up make you feel an all, a lot lighter so you're able to in, enjoy your workouts and work out longer through your pregnancy so I am um, it's it's always great to see different people using them in different ways but um but you can wear them and feel reassured that they are um proven to support by uh, um biomechanically tested at the University of Portsmouth so you can feel very comfortable and confident and hopefully alleviate any anxiety and I was saying I'm not wearing one of your bras and I can't it just cuts and I can't breathe so I'm very excited that you're developing some some new bras as well for us women and you were oh. saying that they are also going to be suitable for brain, which is so mind-blowingly like simple and so important because I'm sure as in my first pregnancy as soon as I've given birth and recovered spent that time I'll then look at trying to get some movement back in be it you know reduced and steady and controlled but it's nice to be able to go back to the kit that you had when you were pregnant and be confident that it's going to support you beyond your pregnancy as well. Because obviously, once you have, you're still going to have that tummy that's going to need that action support. You're going to have the lower back because your boobs are going to be so much bigger. So to then be able to have this to carry on beyond the pregnancy, it's, I mean, it's almost like if it's the price of one. It's, um, it, I mean... I think every woman after her first pregnancy looks at her body and goes, I'm not pregnant anymore, but I still look pregnant. And you need to make sure that you yes. wear things to help you support, to get back um, into exercise safely um, and in a way that looks after the huge changes that your body's gone through and the recovery that it's, that it's, um, that it's transitioning through and being again really nice to yourself looking up wearing the right clothes to support you doing the right exercises to safely get back into pregnancy uh, get back into exercise after having your pregnancy and what how did you feel getting back to exercise how long did you how long did it take you is there any exercises that you would recommend for people for women as they um, transition to safely return to fitness after having had their baby I was very surprised. I thought, because I am a personal trainer and I'm addicted to exercise, like it makes, it's like my teeth. I like have to get up and move. Movement is just <laughs> it. But when I had Scarlett, my little Scarly baby, I had, I could have stayed in the hospital for two weeks. They had to kick me out of there. I was very comfortable doing absolutely nothing. They did ask me at one point, when was I considering leaving? <laughs> but I was, I was very lucky and I know I want that luxury this time. And there's a lot of anxiety and nerves, which I'm sure a lot of uh, mums are going through, which I'm more than happy to discuss and, and do question and answers on a live or whatever, because there's a lot going on. Um, but it just, I had my own room and it was just that time and space. And with body 
needs to heal and you don't have to just one heal. Although I did get back to exercise and PT in weeks. So it took two weeks and then I was back. And which oh is a lot faster God, than most women. I thought my bottom was going to just fall out. All right. You know, because it was, I'd had episiostomy steps that we'd gone for it down there. And the first time you exercise, it's like a reverse IVF process. Terrifying. No, your body anymore. And like we were just saying, you know, when you have that first pregnancy, I think even the second time around, I'm still going to be kind of, you know, overwhelmed by whatever birth I have with what my body's gone through and, and how my body looks and feels because you've you've got that space where you've had this baby. It doesn't just go. Um, I found, I mean, this sounds, doesn't, doesn't, this sounds silly, but walking was my therapy. Um, walking with her in the carrier, feeling that connection, that skin to skin, um, really did make me feel kind of empowered, control and just get it back. I did uh, a couple of personal training with some of my more elderly clients, which was more kind of mobility. And that, that I found really useful for mastitis and breastfeeding. So for one of the lockdowns, um, I don't think I'm gonna do it this week. This week's gonna be bar, but next week I'll do a mobility flow. And I, I did one before with a broom pole, but this time we'll do it with just our bodies. All this kind of like movement with the arms, bringing it across, rolling the shoulders, it kind of gets in through the chest. You wanna try and open up as much as possible because your boobs get so engorged and so sore and you just want to kind of try and you know, you want to get it all flowing. You just hold your body and you're locked and you're hunched forward. You're not allowed chest to expand. So you're pulling your shoulders forward. Your shoulders get elongated. Your chest gets really tight, puts extra pressure on your lungs. So a lovely mobility fly, which you can get from exercises like Pilates and yoga and a very careful build up of your core. Core restore exercises, pelvic floor. When I breastfed, I tried to do that pelvic floor. With the pelvic floor, is a common misconception. You inhale, draw it up. It's actually an exhale, draw the front back passage up inside you. Inhale, release. And that's just trying to get those sling-like muscles to lift up, to connect. You basically, after you've given birth, are trying to re all those connections that have been so powerfully shattered and, by a and head. And you need to do it. <laughs> you cannot forget. The just because you can't see it, you must do them. It's It gets boring, but just make it a habit. Like, just take it off your to-do list every single day, even just a few minutes. But yes, it's the number one well, let's face it, thing you must eating, not forget. Are you good at the pelvic floor? Yes, <laughs> you, 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 you only get one, you must look after it. <laughs> exactly. So, and also when you're ready, light aerobic exercise, take out the jump, take out the impact, if that's what you enjoy doing. Again, it's, it's what you enjoy doing. I love dancing, so dance for me was really, really important. And dance is a really good way to express your emotions, your stress to get out of your body. And again, the stressed you are, the happier mummy is, the happier baby is. Absolutely. And do you have any other advice for IVF mamas who are preparing to become going through their um, starting the process or, you know, have um, have successfully become pregnant and are now kind of a little bit feeling a little bit like they could do with a bit of community that's sadly missing at the moment? reach out reach out to your mum friends and also reach out to us on here like I am so open talking to people when I um wrote my blog for you for the zine I had quite a lot of just dms on my instagram um which is so nice underscore girl, girl and score fitness see what I did there um talk to me like been through it I'm so happy to talk through your concerns and any anxieties worries I do regular Zoom sessions, um, and they're not for pregnant women. One class on a Friday I do for pregnant women. There's 10 of them and they've all got their, well, they, they've had their babies and their babies come along and they join and they chat. And we're exercising, so nice. but it, it's just as important afterwards we talk. 
So it can, you can have a half an hour talk afterwards and you kind of just need to be able to vent. So I would say, talk to people. Don't feel like you have to go through this alone because you blinking well don't. I've got a friend who's literally just found out that she can't go and have her partner with her at the 12 week scan. Now this woman had, it's not IVF, but it's a miracle. She had cervical cancer. She has no <laughs> cervix whatsoever but she managed to conceive. She is terrified. And she's now found out that this hospital's policy is that she can have someone in the room with her. Whereas I've got a scan next week and I can have my husband in the room. And that's kind of how barbaric, crazy the world is at the moment. And, you know, we just had a chat and she ate cake. And I was like, eat that flipping cake. Like, mm -hmm. it is so okay to be angry the world, to be cross to hate your husband to hate anyone walking around who looks like they're happier than you <laughs> like you are entitled to like own your emotions and feel those emotions and if you want to cry cry i've i the first trimester i was so guilty of trying to keep it together and being like yeah i'm fine i'm just puking up the whole time <laughs> yeah. and then i, I felt great <laughs> I can't like I'm not fine I'm not okay it's that it's okay not to be okay and it's also okay to feel like you have failed it's okay to not do that workout you haven't failed you've actually succeeded in taking care of yourself and being aware of what your body needs if you are feeling I shouldn't move off the couch because of this IVF pregnancy and how dare I think about moving then think about how it would you feel if you moved mentally. If it wouldn't make you feel better, if you if you really want to stay on that sofa and watch that TV and have your tea and biscuits, why not do it? Just but if you feel like look actually, after yourself in that moment, it's that protection. It's it's listen to your body in that moment. Like I said, keep going back to listen to your body, put a routine. And if that routine doesn't feel that good day, change it, switch it around and thrive and be your inspiration. Look at your body. Look at what you're creating. Of course, you're exhausted. Of course, you're tired. Of course, you feel emotions and you're perfectly entitled. And don't don't ever forget that. And don't let anyone feel make you feel bad for feeling like that but also don't hold it inside, reach out to those around you because, you know, this time around, you may not be able to have your baby shower that you wanted. And that's, there are other ways and different ways you can do it. You know, Zoom isn't ideal, but people still want to connect. People are desperate to connect. So people will want to connect with you and share stories and hear a story. And if you haven't got anyone to talk and to, whatever. message Lottie. <laughs> You message me. I love it. I, I literally listen to me. I, Alex, you can barely get a word in it. I can talk for England. And I, I can promise you, I've probably been through it all at some way or know someone that has. So I can pretty much, if you say I'm feeling like this, I can take it all from you, can't I? I'd be like, well, one up on you guys. No, I'm joking. I literally, <laughs> I think, I think it's, it's, I've always believed that, you know, women are incredible. We are so strong, but we need to be our own champions. And um, sometimes it just helps to talk about it. Yeah, and find someone who can lift you up if you're not feeling it yourself that day. Oh, yeah, this has been exactly. absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for your insight and your inspiration. We've um, got workouts with Lottie that um, on IGTV that you can do um, anytime. And then we've got some live workouts um, every Sunday at 12 for the next couple of weeks. And then on um, the website on fitamama.com and activepregnancy.com we have lots of workouts you can follow pregnancy workouts postnatal workouts bar mobility warm-up dance anything to get um, a bit of inspiration and some energy to inspire you so thank you again and um, look forward to our next workout with you on sunday thank you so much as ever it's been an absolute pleasure